Buongiorno. Anyhaseo. Nihoma. This might be easier. Good morning. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Good morning. I just thought that was interesting that I was thinking how many ways I can say good morning in different languages. I don't speak them, but <laughs> so thank you for having me, Pastor. I need some help, and I was available. <laughs> and today is the Pentecost, the day of the Pentecost, and it's, it's interesting how in how many languages so many people around the world are celebrating today. Of course, in the United States, but in the United States there are so many different ethnic groups having services and worshiping the Lord, Filipino, Chinese, I don't know about French, but, but uh, Spanish especially, some Asian languages, all the African languages, but different, different, different ways to say glory to God, and, and it's in, interesting. I wonder if always when we get to heaven, what will be the language <laughs> in heaven, in heaven who, what we're going to speak. Uh, so, and today as we celebrate the Pentecost, the day of the Pentecost, it's one of those Christian festivities that uh, we look in retrospect and we talk about as it were normal. Like when I was little, my mom told me so many times to make my bed that when I was 17 and about to take off for college, it was just like repetition for me. I didn't care. <laughs> or wash your hands, or brush your teeth. It's kind of normal. We do that every day. So Pentecost has become so normal for us and the world that it just looks another festivity on the, in the church. But actually, every time I think about Pentecost, it seems to me bizarre for me. I suppose the same is we can say about Christmas and, and other festivities in the church. You know, in Christmas, a child is born to a virgin, and then, and then, a, and then a man, and, and for Easter, we celebrate that a man comes from another area that is not Earth to this planet. He born from a virgin, and then he grew up. He taught people, but nobody cares about him. And 33 years later, he's crucified. Uh, we celebrate that. But three days later, also, he resurrected. And according to the readings that we're going to do in the next three weeks, he went to heaven. And so most of the festivities, we take it for granted, for normal. And we don't think that much well, how it looks like the first time. But for me, Pentecost is the most bizarre story in the Bible. And you can imagine with me, you can picture that in your head this morning, how the first disciples were just perplexed to see what was happening around on that day. And you can read it later at home. That could be your homework for the day. So I will call Pastor Doug during the week and, uh, and tell him, I gave homework to your congregation to read the, the reading for the Sunday, for the Pentecost. But you can read it at home, and you can, you can think about it, but I was wondering what the first disciples were thinking about when they were sitting around in that little place with 120 people, with flames in, the heart, in their heads, and speaking in very bizarre languages. It's like me, I'm, I'm made, uh, my first language is Spanish, but I grew up learning Italian at home. So then I went to college in the States and English, and then I hang out with Chinese and Koreans. And it was interesting when we were eating, we talking different languages. And doo -doo -doo. Nobody <laughs> understood each other. If you always said, let's speak in English, everybody. Same here. Imagine the first disciples hearing so many languages on people who never studied their language, however, 
they speak so many languages. And the Bible, the Bible says that they, the disciples understood and also the other people around what they were, they were saying. So, it's interesting that in Pentecost happened in one place, and like other things that happen in many places. If you read the Bible, it happened in only one place at one time. And a couple weeks ago, we learned that Jesus was arrested when after Palm Sunday, he was arrested, crucified, and then resurrected. And people were just crazy. What's going on? Looking for him and others went to the empty tomb and found it empty. <laughs> I remember the lady came first and notified the disciples, he is alive. But also Peter went on different occasions to the tomb and then the Pharisees went to the tomb too, even though they didn't believe in Jesus. And you can read all those stories in the Bible and you will see that it's it happened in different, with different people at different times. But Pentecost, it happens only once and in one place. And it's in Jerusalem. After they spent more than a month, the disciples, waiting for what Jesus promised when he ascended to, have, to heaven, then finally came. And it was the Holy, the Holy Gospel. And we find this morning the reading in, in Acts chapter 2 that they were together on the Pentecost day. And the Pentecost is a Jewish celebration, festivity. It's a major festivity. And you can read that in Deuteronomy chapter 16. And it's a celebration of the harvest. It means when they start harvesting. And I think you are familiar with that since we are in the farm area, in this area. And the disciples were back together after they were afraid that they were, might be persecuted. And they were looking, probably at this time, some religious stability. Do you understand what I mean by religious stability? So nothing, no problems among Pharisees, no persecutions. And, well, they were just ready for the next step, what Jesus has in, in door for them. And they might think, they might, they might be thinking like, oh, now we're going to have services every Sunday. We will come nicely dressed. Well, not in the desert. We can come in shorts and sandals. But we can come, having a nice service, and go home. I notice that every time I plan something, <laughs> the Lord changes. So I don't know why. My guess is that he's wiser than me. But finally, the Bible says in, in Acts chapter 2 that the promise came to the disciples, the Holy Spirit. When they were together, probably they were play, praying. And then the Bible says they came a wind and filled the house. And there were tongues of fire on the house and each of the believer and then the Bible says that suddenly they speak they start speaking they begin speaking uncontrollably in different tongues different languages very bizarre as I, I told the, the stories when I was in college with my friends from different countries they but, but it's interesting that every person that was there understood what they were saying. The people in that, in that church, in their room. And it says that some people thought they were drunk. You know, imagine what we started this morning church at 9 o'clock. In my home church, we started at 8 o'clock, <laughs> the first service. Imagine coming at 8 o'clock borracho, drunk, and start like, hey, preaching, drunk. <laughs> And then suddenly the elder just, yeah. 
to many, many cervezas. So people who were watching them, not the ones in the room, not the, the ones, the Jesus believers, but the other people around who didn't know about Jesus, imagine when they hear these people who never spoke before the language telling the wonders and the good news about Jesus Christ. And some of them might, might thought they are borrachos, drunk. What's going on? But there, there was one person who didn't think that people were drunk. And do you remember the name of that person? Pedro. Peter. And Peter thought, no, they are not drunk. And he assured the people they are not drunk. Because they were experiencing the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The gift of God that came to us in Holy Baptism and Holy Communion every Sunday. That was the first time, that was the way the Lord chose to pour out his uh, Holy Spirit in his church. And it was passed on to many generations until today to you and to me. I'm sure you received the Holy Spirit. We confess that, we believe that, that we received that Holy Spirit in Holy, Commun in Holy Baptism. But it's a gift for you. It's a gift for me. And what you do with gifts? If you don't like the gift, what you do it? What you do with the gift you don't like? Either you hide it, or you give it away. Or nicely, when the people who gave it to you do not realize you put it where? In the blue barrel or black barrel? The trash. But when you enjoy, when you like the gift that you receive in the, your birthday, what do you do with it? You show it. Yeah. You, you tell everybody, your neighbors, guess what? I got a new gift. You want to see it? A couple of weeks ago, one of my niece's birthday, and she always wanted something to write a special notebook in college. So I gave it to her, and the next day he was showing everybody, even in Facebook, a picture and post. Very happy. When you get a gift that you like it, and you enjoy it, and it's good for you, you show up. So this morning we celebrate a special gift that was, was put in our, on us in the holy water, and it's the Holy Spirit. Now, how we show it to other people, how we share it, I would say, how you share the good news. Remember that that gift should give you excitement. You should be excited that you got the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's not like, oh, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit. Ah. No, Jesus gave me the Holy Spirit. Now what? What should I do with it? That Holy Spirit energizes you. It gives new life. Well, you can talk with Pastor Doug during the Bible class and other Sundays, but, but it gives so many things to you. New life, new opportunity in life. Making you new. The Bible says in John chapter 3 that we're born again in Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is a gift given to the church and to the churches, not only to us, in all the places around the world, all Christians. Now, the time is for us. The Holy Spirit has come to us, and we should be happy. Or well, raise your hand if you are not happy with the Holy Spirit. If you are not, <laughs> if you are happy, Praise the Lord. It's, it's yours. It's mine. And it's interesting because we can, we can share with other people the Holy Spirit. It's not only for me. You know, it's like my ADNA is mine. My ID is mine. My social security is mine. My, my car, well, supposedly it's mine. 
my bank account is probably less than mine. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit is yours, is mine, is ours. We should be happy. And it's very interesting. If you keep reading Acts in, this next cha- in the next uh, chapter, the next thing they do is they elect a replacement for Judah, the traitor, Matthias. Because the church then got excited. We need to continue with the work of Jesus Christ. We were 12. We are 11 now. Let's find the 12 one. And then later, a lot of people like Paul got so excited that he started preaching the gospel to even those who were not Jewish. Even he went to the Roman Imperial and told him the gospel, even though the Imperial didn't like it. He went to different islands. He was excited. I think if he, has some, if, if, if he was in, in that time ready to go to another planet, I think Paul and all the disciples will take them one of those other space ships and fly to another galaxy because they were excited. It's time to share the gospel. Actually, I don't, I don't find boring come to church, but for most people, come to church and being Christian is kind of boring. Huh? Well, the same again. Oh. Ah. And these people here, if you read the rest of Acts, they were so excited. They said, let's go. Actually, one of them was killed in the first month after Pentecost. He stood in the main plaza, they started preaching the gospel, people didn't like it, like it especially the Pharisees, and then they stoned him. And that's in the next chapter in Acts. So I was afraid that the Holy Spirit, not only in my church, my home church, but also in the central, but also in the Missouri Center Church, and all the Lutheran churches around the world, and all Christianity, makes us excited that we have something good, something new. Because that excitement that comes from the Holy Spirit also gives power to us. The power to share the gospel. The power to connect with other Christians. The power to say, I'm the son of God. Now I'm ready to share the gospel. It's not like the power the president or the queen or the king receives. No, this is a different kind of power. It was a time when the church felt like they were so powerful that they become the state and they become controllers, they kill people in the name of God because they didn't believe in God. Instead of telling them the story, they said, believe or we kill you. You you can read that in the history books or even in Wikipedia you want. But no, that's the power. And we Lutherans have something that is called the, the, the powers of the key. The power that we have to open the the door to the to the heaven to heaven. And you know what is that power, that key that is so powerful? It's the word of God, the gospel, the message of Jesus Christ. It, many people read the Bible but they don't believe in Jesus and they don't believe in the Holy Spirit. They never understand what that means. But when we believe in the gospel, when we believe in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit comes to us, then we understand the Bible, and we understand the gospel, and we want them to do is to say to other people, here it is. And that's the reason why we Lutherans call the power of the key to heaven. Because with that key called the gospel, people can go in heaven, like you and me. And we as Christians receive that excitement, but also that power to tell others, Jesus loves you. 
This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Remember the song? I have, I have seen that song in Spanish when I grew up. Now in English. Now it's time. The Holy Spirit is a gift that gives energy, excitement, and power to the church and to the Christian, Christianity. Every one of you and I have that Holy Spirit in, in us. And also the Holy Spirit brings something that is very important for us. And that's the message that we proclaim. We also don't tell people any story. You know, I can come this morning and tell you many stories about my life. Most of them, most of them very boring, I tell you. Extremely boring. But when I, when I remember that song that says, tell me the story. And when I get to heaven, I want to hear again the story. A story that has no end. And you can repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. And it sounds so sweet to my eyes. There are a couple of songs in the hymnal that it tells you about. Repeat the song. Repeat the story of, the, of Jesus Christ. When I get to heaven, it will be sweet again. Like Martin Luther said, like honey to my ears. And that's the gospel, the, the gospel that came to us in the word of God. The Holy Spirit, Spirit also not solo energizes us, gives excitement and gives the power, but also gives the understanding of the word of God. How many people said, I don't understand what it says in the Bible? Well, do you believe in Christ? No. Then, let's start from the beginning. The gift of the Holy Spirit. Open our eyes. Not only my eyes are small, you know. Like, but open my eyes of the heart and my little wicked brain to understand what he says in the Bible. So I can tell others what is important for them in life that is believing in Jesus Christ. The gift of the Holy Spirit is ultimately that, a gift. It's given to you. Enjoy it. Get excited. Use it. I was, I was telling my, my nephew when we was little, he was like five years old, about something about the Holy Spirit. He said, it's to use it. And he said, can I use it, can I use it as a horse? You know, he might be going a horse. As I reflect over the years after he went to college, I said, he was right. You know, it's, it's like a horse for a horse that we can ride and, and go fast and tell her. This gospel that we read this morning, this word of God, tell us about the Holy Spirit. And it is my prayer, and help me with this, to pray that in Pentecost, and not only we celebrate another festivity, but we celebrate something that really is us. Makes the church what is the church. When I grew up, my father was Ramon Contreras, so he named him Ramon Contreras. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, he was Jesus Christ, the Savior. And he gave it to you as, a, as his saved son. Now is your chance to share that with others. To celebrate. Not to get, uh, how to go to church. Well, you know the reason why it's called Happy Meal? The meal for the children in McDonald's? Makes the children happy. We should call it Happy Holy Spirit. Makes you happy. Makes you excited. Energized. Embrace every activity that you do. Everything. The spirit is in you. The spirit is in the Holy Church. And we want on this, in this day of Pentecost that the church can embrace it.
We want to know the power of the Holy Spirit among us. And we have opened ourselves to the Holy Spirit. We are open book to the Holy Spirit. When, we came, when he came to us in the Holy Baptist. And we ask him to bless Grace, Lutheran, Missouri Senate, and all the Lutherans, and all the Christians around, with the blessing of the Holy Community that we enjoy in the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>